The Arizona Cardinals finished the 2022 season with a 4-13 record, and head coach Cliff Kingsbury was fired at season's end. It was a very disappointing season to say the least, and this came just a year after making the first of what will hopefully be many playoff appearances during the Kyler Murray era. Hopeful is a strong word with the Cardinals, because they are a mess. This is truly one of the worst situations in all of football, but it did not get like this overnight. There's been missed first round picks, bad contracts, players underperforming, and much, much more. The things that have the makings of a bad football team, Arizona has somewhere on their roster, and they have become a complete disaster. And we are going to break everything down in today's video and how Arizona got to where they are now. And there is a lot to dive into in today's video, and without further ado, let's begin. And we are starting today's video by diving into the Arizona Cardinals drafts over the past few years. There's a reason teams build through the draft and why hitting on draft picks is emphasized in the media as much as it is. The Bengals went from the number one overall pick to having Joe Burrow and T. Higgins in one year, then added Jamar Chase the following year. And that's just one example of how hitting on draft picks early can turn a franchise around. Unfortunately, the Cardinals do not have a high rate of success of hitting on their first round picks. And there's no way to sugarcoat how bad the Arizona Cardinals first round picks have been over the past 10 years. It's no accident they've made the playoffs once in the past seven years and have not won the division in this time frame either. Their first round picks since 2018 aren't exactly reassuring, as in 2018 they took quarterback Josh Rosen and we all know how that worked out. The most memorable thing about Josh Rosen is the nine mistakes quote as he was drafted 10th overall. Five years later, Rosen has been a part of seven organizations at one point in time, whether it's actually playing for them or being on the practice squad. Kyler Murray is far and away the best out of these first round picks, and they did sign him to a contract extension and I credit the Cardinals for hitting on Kyler, as finding a franchise quarterback is never easy, and we will get more into Kyler later. Linebacker Isaiah Simmons was their 2020 first round pick, and this is another player we will discuss later, and I like Simmons and think he is a tad underrated. Zabin Collins has also been a solid player. Now, some of the Cardinals' other first round picks this past decade include Dayon Buchanan and Robert Kandichi. They also selected Hassan Redick in the first round and used him incorrectly, and he is now flourishing for the Philadelphia Eagles as he finished 2022 with 16 sacks and very quietly has 39 and a half sacks over the past three years. They traded their 2022 first round pick for Marquise Hollywood Brown in an attempt to keep the offense going, but this was not a great trade and one they should have never made. The main criticism I have with the Isaiah Simmons pick was you knew entering 2020 that they needed as much help with developing Kyler Murray as possible. And that's not to say Kyler was a bust because he was the offensive rookie of the year and showed a ton of promise. They traded for receiver DeAndre Hopkins that offseason when they fleeced the Houston Texans for a second round pick. Hindsight is 2020, but it was a consensus the top three receivers in that draft at the time were in no order, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, and Kyler's former college teammate, CeeDee Lamb. And they selected Simmons at number eight overall, and I much would have rather had them take CD over Isaiah at the time, because truly as simple as it sounds, imagine a defensive coordinator going into game plan against CD and DeAndre leading up to Sunday it would be hell. And when you have a chance to do that, well, I think the Bengals proved you should make that move. I wasn't a fan of the Zabin Collins selection at the time either, and thought they should have drafted a pass rusher to pair opposite of Chandler Jones, who was coming off of a season in which he got hurt in 2020, but had 49 sacks in the previous three seasons. And hell, at the time you knew in the back of your head, Chandler's contract was expiring at the end of 2021. So there was always going to be a chance he would leave in free agency, and he did as he is now a Las Vegas Raider. From a positional value standpoint, how much better shape would this franchise be in if they selected CeeDee Lamb in the top 10 back in 2020, and a player like, oh, I don't know, Jalen Phillips, who was on the board when Arizona took Zayvon Collins in 2021? 
This also isn't to do the classic hindsight is 2020, like with the Bears, for example, who could have taken Patrick Mahomes because nobody saw that playing out the way that it did. But these were two very viable options and two options that, thinking out loud, were very realistic at the time. And the Cardinals are going to have to fill a lot of holes this offseason. Head coach is, of course, one of those holes, but one of the most important positions in football is the defensive line or pass rush. The Cardinals' leading pass rusher in 2022 was veteran J.J. Watt, who finished the year with 12 and a half sacks. J.J., of course, retired at the end of the 2022 season, which leaves the team a big hole to fill. And I think J.J.'s 2022 season flew under the radar as to how productive he was. Not surprisingly, he led the team in pressures as well with 56, which brings the question of who replaces J.J. in 2023? It is assumed to be either Jalen Carter, the defensive tackle from Georgia, or Will Anderson, the edge rusher from Alabama, whichever player the Bears do not take with the first overall pick. And to be clear, they would not necessarily take over J.J.'s role within the defense, as much as it is to say they would try to replace his production, which is not going to be easy even for as good as both Carter and Anderson are. What concerns me with the Cardinals' future is what coach would want to enter this situation. It was announced while making this video that Kyler Murray is likely to miss half the season from a torn ACL and meniscus, and the roster is not good. I know Cardinals fans have talked about Sean Payton and have a vision of Sean Payton being their next head coach, and maybe he will be, but if you're Sean Payton, why would you want to leave his job at Fox to take over the team with the third worst record in the NFL with not a lot to look forward to? I don't understand the appeal as the job would be awful. You're in a division with the Rams who will be healthier in 2023, the 49ers who have been to back-to-back -back NFC Championship games, and the Seahawks who had a resurgence year in 2022. I don't think there's any appeal for Sean Payton or for any of the other premier coaches to say, come lead this mess against other good teams and one truly elite team in the 49ers and try and lead us to success. And that also goes into why the Arizona Cardinals are a complete disaster. And out of the coaching candidates available, I do think D'Amico Ryans, the defensive coordinator for the 49ers, and Sean Payton are the two best out of this year's candidates. Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator, and Dan Quinn, the Cowboys defensive coordinator, were two of the top candidates, but recently announced they were going back to their teams for the 2023 season, which indirectly hurts the Arizona Cardinals. There are so many issues with this team, and receiver DeAndre Hopkins wants to be traded as well, and I don't think you can blame him for wanting out of this situation. He will be 31 at the start of the 2023 season, and has been a star since entering the league back in 2013. In 9 games in 2022, he had 64 receptions for over 700 yards and 3 touchdowns and was a good player on a bad team. He also has a no-trade clause, so for Arizona, it's not as simple as trading him to a bad team that has a lot of cap room. Hopkins will have to agree to go to the said team. Regardless of the draft compensation they receive for him, the receiving depth chart isn't exactly deep heading into next year as it's led by Marquise Brown, Rondell Moore, and Greg Dortch. Colt McCoy is also in line at the moment, and if you think they might be able to bring in Jimmy G or Derek Carr, they're not going to have the cap space for that. They have a ton of guarantees as between DJ Humphreys, Marquise Brown, Zach Ertz, James Conner, and Jalen Thompson alone, they have over $69 million nice, guaranteed to these guys. This does not include Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, or Buda Baker who only add to this number, and by quite a bit. So heading into the 2023 season, the Cardinals have a situation that's not only not desirable, but they're not in a great position to bring in a ton of free agents because they do not have an immense amount of money. And bad teams generally have to overpay free agents as it is because of this. NFL players' careers are so short that the extra few million does not always mean they will willingly go to a worse team. Look no further than Christian Kirk to the Jaguars a year ago. 
He signed a four-year, $84 million deal in a move that shocked everyone, but the Jags had back-to-back -back number one overall picks and had to help their young quarterback out in Trevor Lawrence before it was too late and too far in his progression. So they overpaid, and because of the guarantees, it's largely viewed as a two-year deal, but the point of overpaying a player to help the team out stands. So from an adding talent perspective, they are banking on either Jalen Carter or Will Anderson to be the face of this defense for the next 5-10 to 10 years, which isn't bad to bet on, and you will hear more about them over the next few months, but they are at least a year away, if not more, from seriously competing. There's a half-joking wish amongst Cardinals fans to hire Jeff Saturday so they can acquire USC quarterback Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick in the 2024 draft who is going to be viewed as one of the best quarterback prospects in the past decade. But taking a glance at their division, yes, the 49ers got beat by the Eagles in the NFC Championship game, but that game wasn't comparable to how they played all season. And the two times these teams played in 2022, the Cardinals and 49ers, the 49ers didn't just beat them, they beat the brakes off of them. In the two games they played, the 49ers won by a combined score of 76-23. All four of Arizona's 2022 wins were over teams that finished with a top 10 draft pick. The Rams' win, for those that may not know, was a game in which Colt McCoy beat the John Wofford-led Rams. The Seahawks beat this team twice by double digits, granted it was by 10 points in each game, but they beat them by double digits two times this year nonetheless. And when you're building a team's roster, you draft and sign free agents to beat the teams in your division. Because if you can't beat the teams in your division, how else will you eventually achieve the final goal, which is to win a Super Bowl? And thinking out loud and try to think of the 49ers 2022 season rather than just the NFC Championship game versus the Eagles where Josh Johnson played and Brock Purdy was hurt, how do the Cardinals get better to beat the 49ers? There are countless answers. In no order, get better at receiver, get better on the offensive and defensive line, Get better at defending the run, as in the two games they played, the 49ers ran for 159 yards and 169 yards and put up 38 points in each game. Earlier in the video, I said we'd get back to Kyler, and here we are. Yes, the Cardinals extended Kyler, and good for them, but my question regarding Kyler is, four years into his career, do we really think he is capable of leading this franchise to a Super Bowl? And that's not just 2023 specific, that can be any year. I personally do not, and especially not with this roster. It's not an exaggeration to say any quarterback in the NFL could not lead this team at the moment to a Super Bowl. And yes, the Bears will benefit from having the number one overall pick, but boy, the Cardinals really could have used the extra few losses this season. I also mentioned earlier I expect them to take Will Anderson or Jalen Carter, and I do, but I think they are a trade-down candidate to either Indy at 4 or, in a different scenario, missing out on Carter or Anderson and trading with the Raiders at 7 or Carolina at 9 to acquire another first-round pick next year. No matter how you slice it, the Cardinals are at least a year away from competing, and in reality, it's probably two or three years, because the Arizona Cardinals, at the moment or at least, are a disaster. That's all I have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as it would mean the world and help a ton. And until next time, be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.